Let's do this. We have waited too long. In the final moments of October, the FAA wrapped up its SpaceX Starship safety review report. This means SpaceX's giant Starship rocket just cleared a major hurdle on the road to its second-ever liftoff. It won't be long now until Starship can create a new milestone, even at the beginning of this November. Are you ready? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, announced Tuesday that it's wrapped up its Starship safety review. The FAA's review is part of a broader assessment required before Elon Musk's Space Exploration Technologies Corporation can attempt another test flight following the rocket's explosive April debut. A safety review is focused on issues that affect public health and the safety of property. It consists of evaluating the applicant's safety organization, system safety processes, flight safety analysis, and quantitative risk criteria for launch, re-entry, and vehicle disposal. Finally, the FAA took approximately seven weeks to complete the safety element of the launch license for this investigation. This comes after they announced the conclusion of the Starship IFT-1 accident investigation on September 8th. This is good news for Starship ahead of the next launch. However, there are many opinions suggesting that this announcement is, in fact, business as usual. It even sounds like the FAA might be shifting blame for the prolonged delay to other agencies by stating that they've completed it, while other agencies have yet to approve. They anticipate a much longer delay. There's still another regulatory box to check before SpaceX can get a license for the next Starship liftoff. The FAA is continuing to work on the environmental review, the agency wrote in an emailed statement. As part of its environmental review, the FAA is consulting with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services on an updated biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act. The FAA and FWS must complete this consultation before the environmental review portion of the license evaluation is completed. So, nothing changes. The slowest approval is still the slowest approval. But I guess it'll have to wait until the days of November, even with the Fish and Wildlife stamp on it. Now, we just have to wait for the statement that the new floodwater system doesn't harm the environment in any material form. A newly initiated Fish and Wildlife review represents one of the final regulatory hurdles SpaceX must clear before it can proceed with its flight plans. This review formally began on October 19th in collaboration with the FAA, according to an emailed Fish and Wildlife Services statement. The service needs to look at the potential environmental impacts and threats to endangered species in the sensitive Boca Chica region as a consequence of recent upgrades at SpaceX's South Texas Starbase, particularly the newly installed water deluge system. Among the upgrades is a new water deluge system designed to mitigate the immense force and heat generated during liftoff by spraying water. It's basically a gigantic bidet for rockets in terms of how it works, but a bidet that must quell the power of 33 angry Raptor engines, producing a combined 16 million pounds of thrust. Fish and Wildlife Services is now conducting its own assessment of the new water system to ensure compliance with federal regulations. While it may seem a bit much to be so concerned about a system that sprays water into a rocket as it blasts off, SpaceX is required to adhere to stringent regulations related to the release of industrial processed wastewater as dictated by the Federal Clean Water Act. Fish and Wildlife highlighted in its press release that the Endangered Species Act mandates restarting the formal consultation process if there are substantial modifications to a project and its effects. If new data emerges on species that were not previously considered, or if a species newly added to the list, for SpaceX reinitiation with FAA, we are considering the operation of a deluge system at the launch pad, Fish and Wildlife Services wrote. The FWS has until March 3rd next year to complete an updated biological opinion on Starship's environmental impact, though it does not anticipate it taking that long. That 135 days breaks down into two main buckets as part of the agency's ESA Section 7 consultation process. Formal consultation, up to 90 days, the period where the FAA and Fish and Wildlife Services share information about the proposed project and the species or critical habitat likely to be affected, craft a biological opinion, up to 45 days, a biological opinion usually includes conservation recommendations to further the recovery of listed species, and it may also include reasonable and prudent measures as needed to minimize any take of listed species. In a statement, the FAA spokesperson said, the environmental review is the last major element to complete before the FAA makes a license determination. Let's hope everything unfolds smoothly, allowing Starship to launch successfully this November. Officials at SpaceX have been on edge too, as the government agency's pace of work has been impacting the next Starship missions. 
We're prepared to conduct Starship's second integrated test flight, pending only FAA license approval, which includes the reviews of supporting agencies, William H. Gerstenmeyer said in a written statement to a Senate subcommittee. Critically, the vehicle's been ready to fly since mid-September. The current regulatory process is not keeping up with the pace of innovation. Because of SpaceX's iterative process of testing and flying, Gerstenmeyer described IFT-2 as needed in order to test critical systems needed to meet NASA objectives. NASA's Human Landing System program is also eagerly awaiting this next launch to continue the process towards the version of Starship that will bring humans down to the lunar surface on the Artemis III mission, targeting launch in December 2025. I'd be remiss if I didn't say we're concerned about the SpaceX schedule for HLS, and the concern is that our critical path, even today, goes through these test flights, said Lisa Watson Morgan, the HLS program manager. And the reason it goes through the test flights is because of SpaceX's developmental approach, which I fully support and I really cherish. Watson Morgan said they're hoping to see the ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer mission sometime in 2024. And if Starship is swiftly granted permission to fly even multiple times from now on, the issue of fuel transfer is bound to be on schedule, perhaps even ahead of the planned timeline. In another development, while SpaceX continues to await government approval for the next Starship test flight, they're not sitting idle. They're actively pushing the development of hundreds of engines to serve their upcoming rocket. Raptor production has been one of the key pain points of the Starship program, at least during the early days of SpaceX's testing campaign. The engine is significantly more power than the Merlin engines that power the Falcon 9 rocket, and it also redirects all its exhaust gases back into the combustion chamber to improve fuel efficiency and power output. Naturally, this requires highly durable parts and a new manufacturing process. SpaceX's chief, Elon Musk, was candid in mentioning these problems during a detailed talk back in 2020, where he shared that the first Starship tests would use fewer engines. A year later, in 2021, SpaceX was producing one engine every two days, indicating that the firm could make as many as 176 engines in a best-case scenario, where production lines ran 24-7. Sticking to its rapid production and design philosophy, the firm managed to double this rate the next year. This was revealed by NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator, shared during a NASA Advisory Council meeting that SpaceX had ramped up the production. SpaceX has moved very quickly on development. We've seen the manufacture what was called the Raptor 1.0. They've since upgraded to Raptor 2.0, which first of all, increases performance and thrust, and secondly, reduces the amount of parts, reducing the amount of time to manufacture and test. They build these things very fast. Their goal was even seven inches a week, and they hit that about a quarter ago. So now they're building seven inches a week. Now, SpaceX might have manufactured as many as 398 Raptor rocket engines, according to an image shared by NASA's deputy administrator, Pam Mallory. She visited SpaceX's facilities as part of NASA's human landing system, HLS Lunar Lander, for the Artemis program. The HLS lander is a customized Starship second stage, and like the Super Heavy booster, it also uses Raptor engines for liftoff and landing. Deputy Administrator Melroy's picture saw her stand in front of the fully assembled Raptor engines, and the top left corner, an engine with the serial number 398 visible on its nozzle bell. All of SpaceX's latest Starship engines are Raptor 2 engines, and according to its chief Elon Musk, these reduce a lot of complexities over the Raptor 1. NASA and SpaceX have continued to work together closely on Starship development due to the Artemis program's reliance on the HLS lander. After her visit, Ms. Melroy expressed confidence in SpaceX's Starship and Raptor development, as well as its Dragon production capabilities. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.